Now let's take a look at the week so far. I mean, after all, it's only Wednesday, but the events of the last couple of days or so have been pretty momentous. All through yesterday, Tuesday, we brought you news of a Nigerian army drone strike which mistakenly targeted and killed a large number of villagers in Tudunbiri in Kaduna State in the northwest. Civilians, including women and children, who'd been gathering to celebrate the birth of the Prophet Muhammad on Sunday. But instead, from the heavens, hell came to them and they came face to face with death. They said they heard what sounded like an aeroplane followed by a massive paralyzing explosion which killed many people and left dozens of others injured. When they came out to check what happened, a second bomb fell on them, killing even more people. Imagine the horror and the shock of it all. Well, to get their thoughts on this and other issues of the day, I'm joined now in the studio by our guest commentators, the public policy analyst, Chibuzo Kereke, and the co-founder of Forefront magazine, Simon Reef Musa, who is also a columnist for the Leadership newspaper. Thank you, gentlemen, very much indeed for joining us. Thank Let me start with you, Chibuzo. I mean, what have you learned um, about that attack so far and what's been your reaction to it? Well, I think uh, it's very horrific. Uh, it's a sad situation. I think that the whole nation is mourning. Uh, although uh, we are seeing some kind of uh, different reaction. Uh, in the past, you wouldn't have the military even make any uh, comment or uh, take uh, responsibility for such a thing. But we have seen that in the past. Uh, so right now, we have seen the military you know, came out and say we are responsible for mm. this. I've also seen the president, you know, ordering for immediate investigation on what has happened. And we have seen a very powerful delegation, you know, going. But you see, every life matters. Uh, every life matters. And these are professionals. And every Nigerian who have commented on this believe that things should have been done differently. Mm. A lot more care should have been taken, a lot more designing, you know, and calculation. Uh, should have been done because uh, in a time of war like this we must also be careful that our civilians with bright future are not just uh, cut off you know from their prime in the manner that has happened mm. it's unfortunate and uh, we have to do everything possible to ensure that such a thing does not uh, happen although a lot of uh, colorations are coming into it because again in nigeria many things are profiled but i think that we should uh this should be a very caution moment even for the military going forward mm. yeah. and, and simon the national emergency management agency nema is saying 85 people but the rights group amnesty international is saying that they've recorded at least 120 people killed because they've got people on the ground there i mean are you surprised as if there'd be no official figure from the army as of yet uh, well i'm not surprised with the figures from the military or whatever you think you can in fact, but the fact of the matter is that for the military to have come out for the first time to agree that yes, it was a mistaken bombing, I think it is something we should also give it to them. We should also understand that uh, in the last years we've seen a lot of this mistaken mm. bombing. It's not just this is not the first time we are having it, but again, for the military coming out to say, well, it was uh, the terrorists were embedded in the community. No, I mean this is something that is. Uh, should not kind of try to reduce or try to downplay the severity of that mistaken bombing. The truth of the matter is that in the last eight years or so, we've had mistaken military bombings. This is not the first time we're having it mm. in this country. We've had it in Borno where we had a lot of people who were just simply killed. Well, I don't subscribe to the idea that the military should go for an uh, investigative panel, that you should have somebody outside the military. No. This for the first time. The military under C.G. Musa is coming out to demonstrate 
its capacity to deal with terrorists. And the fact of the matter is, these terrorists are embedded in some of these communities. That this happened is honestly a soaring state. And we must also give it to the military that haven't come out to say that, oh, they're responsible. I think that should have uh, made Nigerians to believe that, no, these people are very, very sincere. For the first time in the last eight years, we've had a military that was not kind of committed to dealing with insurgency. But under the Tinubu administration, we saw a military that was dedicated to dealing with the aspect, with the issue of terrorism. You will understand in the last eight years, we had a government that was all, um, willingly unable to deal with terrorism. But with this time around, we see the Timur administration coming out to deal with terrorism. Of course, you will, ask, you, you will expect that such a mistaken uh, action is very normal under the military administration. I'm very happy that the, uh, the, 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 the military under C.G. Musa has come out to, uh, to kind of involve non-kinetic approaches right. in order to deal with well, insurgency. Well, it's, it's early days yet, isn't yes. it? I mean, we'll so, have to see how things so, evolve. Of so course. we can't be talking about it as though we've seen the end point. We've not seen we? the end. Right. Do you understand? So there is a need for us to also forgive the military because, one, they've come out to say, well, we are responsible for that. Well, it's, it's not about forgiveness, is yes. it, Chibuza? It's about people taking responsibility for yes. what has gone wrong. That's yeah. what you do in a modern, civilized, accountable society. This story has obviously generated lots of discussions and anger across Nigeria. And we've seen lots of calls, especially from northern Nigeria, that the military heads should either resign or be sacked as a result of in other words somebody has to take responsibility you don't just do things kill lots of people right. and then sit squarely in your office and say oh well i'm desperately sorry about that let's move on to the next attack yeah and, and I mean, that's what is key you see in leadership responsibility accounting is more important than financial absolutely accounting. taking responsibility is very key now they have come out to say, oh, we are responsible. The next is which officer or group of officers or commander is actually responsible for making such mistakes. Yeah. And I'm sure in the military internally there are mechanisms to caution, right? Even though we are at war, but mm. you have to also make sure discipline is applied to the full force of the law. And maybe that is part of the reason the investigation is being called. And another concern is, like you highlighted, why are we not able to have the figures? Is is important. Absolutely. Data is important, even for closure for the families. And we should be able to also look at, you know, and disaggregate the, the bodies that we have, which of them are the embedded uh, terrorists and which of them are, you know, uh, citizens mm. and law abiding, you know, Nigerians among them. But those figures helps us to keep record of data and account and we're able to say this is how the military is progressing with what they're doing but definitely if you're in the military and you miscalculate mm. you have to be responsible for it because without that kind of discipline it may not be a court martial depending on the circumstance that mm. led to it but again somebody has you could have had better or good judgment you didn't get it and a lot of people were affected and they died and therefore maybe one or two things has to apply that will make sure that such a such right. next time when you want to you know take such operation you are more careful right. you are more cautious and you observe the uh, rules of engagement better yeah 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 that, that that's a very good point and um simon we're, we're just hearing now that the death that the uh, the toll for the injured has gone up but at last count, our correspondent Nisi Gabriel was telling us that it was 70, but now it's 81. So clearly, you know, we're still discovering what is sort of, it's an evolving process. Um, some people, particularly from northern Nigeria, have called for independent inquiries, not, rather than the army inquiring into itself. Um, what do you reckon? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Charles, I think one thing we should, we should note 
is that we've had a lot of issues as it, is, as it refers to military operations in combated banditry in this country. Yes, I've had people calling for an independent investigation. There is nothing wrong with that. But the issue is that how far will that go to resolve the issue? Like I told you, the issue is that in the last eight years, we had a military that was simply sitting down and doing nothing. Yeah, but I don't understand what you are you saying that there shouldn't be an inquiry? There should be an or, or inquiry. There shouldn't be an independent there should be inquiry. An indep there, there should be an inquiry. Right. But, but the military has its own strategy on how they can do such. Yeah, inquiries. but the military had a strategy and yes. went and attacked people and killed them. That's the problem here. Do you understand what we're saying? The military strategy failed. Yes. When it went and killed innocent people. Yes. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So you, you, the, the, the point, the argument that people are making and people from that region are saying that you've got to find a way to restore confidence in the public. Yes. Do you understand that? Yes, I understand that. Yeah. But this is not the first time this thing is happening. It's well, that's, that's all the more years. reason why we should take more stringent yes. efforts this time but to make sure that it doesn't happen again. What I'm telling you, in the last eight years, we had a government that was unwillingly that was willingly unable yeah but that to government is no this. longer there now, we have a new government now, and that government is now being tasked to now, do, take the right action yeah if that government is right is there there is need for an investigation and the investigation should be out to find out what has been the problem right okay well you let's understand? move on from i there. i agree that there should be an investigation yeah you've also understood that in the last eight years Former President Muhammad Buhari had to get non-state actors to ensure that insecurity is tackled within the Abuja and Kaduna Expressway. So the issue is that the military has the capacity to look at what happened and they can come up without bringing an independent personality into it. Right. Okay. Yes. Well, let's move on from there. The other big topic of I suppose the last 24 hours is uh, Emeka Hedio has attempt to dislodge um, the governor of Imo State, Hope Uzodim, from his position. Um, he tried to do that and um, it failed, basically. Um, Justice Abubakar described the attempt as strange, frivolous, baseless, unwarranted, and vexatious, suggesting that the motion was a calculated design to make mockery of the Supreme Court. I mean, the viciousness from the, the, the justice was quite extraordinary, really. Um, in other words, that they were out there to taunt the court. And he fined um, Michael Zekome sad 40 million naira. I mean, that is... Quite extraordinary, isn't it? Well, what is your take on well, that? I think it's part of the call for judicial reform. You see? You think the court went too far? Though? They went too far. I mean, what, what is rule of law? Mm. Rule of law is observance of the prevalent law in the society. It's equality before the law. It is justice. Would you rather uh, His Excellency America command uh, his supporters on the streets? With much well, that, well clearly I, not. So, yes. I mean, he approaching the court, believing that under the laws there are opportunity for the judgment of the court to be reviewed, mm. and there are uh, instances where the court has set aside, you know, uh, or, or reversed itself. We have even had Supreme Court justices who were retiring during their validatory section making comment as to certain judgment that has been delivered that should have taken a different course. Mm. So. Uh, why were those people not uh, uh, fine? So we have to encourage citizens to make use of the judiciary, make use of the courts. Any attempt to bar people from having trust in the judiciary as the last hope of the common mm. man, exploring the opportunity of civil you know, litigation and re in resolving matters, will result to anarchy. Once people are aware that the way the court operates now, I can't get anything out of that, then there is alternative. Mm. After all, what is a, what is a public policy? It's what government 
does or what he refuses to do. So even when government does nothing, you have enacted something in, in action. So I don't. I think the the judiciary or the justice were uh, uh, you know rather uh, emotional. I can understand because they have been under attack mm. in recent time. Yeah, Maybe is this is a way you know to protect or shield themselves from mm. further attack. But they have to know the people have nowhere else to go except to the court. Mm. So it is better you look at the matter of merit, you look at your jurisdiction to hear the matter, you look at the, the general merit principles of the issue and dismiss it rather than make it in a, such a way that you are trying to bar even senior members of the bar mm. from taking up briefs. If they don't take up briefs, do you know for the period the supporters and the, 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 the principal actor himself were waiting for this case. Everybody were, were also waiting, mm. hoping that something may come out or yeah. not. But if that opportunity does not exist, in other words, there is no democracy or, you know, uh, you know uh, 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 other means will be employed mm. by the people. And we should never encourage a situation where we can no longer approach the judiciary to seek a, a redress on sensitive and yeah. important matters. That, that's a good yeah. point. Simon, I wonder what you think about that, because obviously the judiciary is there to set precedents as well. And in the process of doing that, often those precedents are initiated by lawyers, particularly senior advocates of, of Nigeria who go there with a landmark case and try and move it in a particular direction, move the law, which is dynamic, in a particular direction. And on, as a result of that, um, you know, set a precedent or get the judges to set a precedent and and sort of you know, declare a new case law. I mean, do you think the court went too far there? Well, as far as I'm concerned, uh, it's quite unfortunate when you have the court determine who is the winner of an election. And in this country, that has been the issue. And because the judiciary itself has shown itself as not too very independent. They are as much as they, 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 they allow certain forces to determine where they go to or what, uh, of, or what their, their verdict is. So many what Nigerians... What exactly do you mean by that? Do you understand? Mm. Many Nigerians do well, What do you do mean by, by, by the fact that they allow other forces to determine their verdict? What I mean by that is yeah. that the truth of the matter is that the court in Nigeria as it is today, many see it as not too independent. Right. What they simply mean is uh, what that simply means is that they allow certain forces to sway their political influence. They are political is that what influence. You're to say? Right. They are political influence. Do you understand? And once you have that, then I can assure you, you don't have a democracy because what? Well, that is speculative. Though. That is speculative. Yeah. But again, I'll also let you know that when the, I when I neck cannot really come and say, "Oh, this is the person who won this very election." and is subjected to a judicial inquiry. That should not be. What should be is that the electoral process should be clear, should be obvious for everybody to know this yeah. is the winner. Absolutely. So as long as you have that problem, then I can assure you, you do not have a clear means of determining who wins an election. And we can see that in Kanu, we will see that in Plateau. We will see that in Nasarawa. We have seen a lot of people coming out to, 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 to you know, protest mm. against what the court is saying. We have seen the, 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 the involvement of technicalities. Do you understand? Mm. And this is not democratic. Democratic is in the sense that INEC should be able to come out and tell us that, oh, this is the winner. But we've not been having it in this 2023 election. And that is why you can see a lot of protests in Kano, in, uh, in Jos, I mean in Plateau, and in Nasarawa. That tells you that the people are not happy. And once you have a loss of confidence from the electorate, then I will tell you that democracy is still a, trying, is, 
in a right. trying moment. Okay. Well, yes. on that note, I want to thank you very much indeed. Simon Reef is the co-founder of Forefront Magazine. He's also a columnist for the Leadership Newspaper. And Chibuzo Kereke is, of course, a public policy analyst. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for having me. Thank That's you. it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.